Yeah. All right, so would you guys cheat for a hundred dollars? I mean, that's a lot of money. God, come on, it's a lot of money, bro. For a hundred dollars, you cheat? It's a lot of money. Though. That no, 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 I'm not cheating for hundred dollars. I weird. think I would. I think I would cheat what for hundred dollars. Would you cheat right now then for a hundred dollars? Yeah, I think I would. I really do. I would cheat for a hundred dollars. Oh, like for real? Yes, for real. There's something wrong with me. Oh my god, yeah, for a hundred dollars, yes, literally. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Pog champ. Oh, yes. Yes. I'll go. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. I'm testing out a new mic today. So if you notice the the sports broadcast type uh, thing, I'm going to be using this for my movie streams and my live broadcasts over on Locals uh, because it allows me to move my head around and express more. And uh, I don't have to keep my face aimed at a mic uh, for my live streams anymore. So I'm, I'm going to give this a test run. If you're wondering why the audio or I have a microphone attached to my face, why I'm doing that. Um, so today, is there any fixing awful women? You know, it's very hard for me to come up with new thumbnail titles other than women crazy episode 743. But here we are. This is uh, uh, many of you might know if you're onto the only fools and Twitch stuff. This is a uh, content creator Amaranth. And Amaranth is known for putting out saucy content. And I, and I don't think there's any problem with this thumbnail, um, but you never know how YouTube is. So if you see me swap this YouTube, uh, thumbnail out, I don't know, halfway through the day on YouTube, well, it's because of YouTube. Of course, it will never switch out on locals. Um, but but guys are, are trying to find ways to communicate and to tell women, you're being awful. Please stop it. Please don't do this anymore. And now they're using AI. Some content creators over at 4chan have started designing AI to correct women's bad behavior because women will not correct their own bad behavior. So we're going to go over that, uh, plus a few more stories of, of course, uh, women behaving badly and how it's having an effect on society, as we always do. One thing that I think is important is that when I... When channels like mine express men's frustration at the world, at governments, at people, at women, at dating, at marriage, at divorce, at all the things, for some reason, people started to assume that meant that we don't like women or that we're like, think we're better than them or something else. I'll leave, I'll leave that topic for another conversation. But if you look at these two images here, I think what's important is one of two things. The one on the left, the one with little devil horns, there's a whole lot of guys that would say, yes, I would, I would do many inappropriate things to her for, for many given hours and until exhaustion and or dehydration set in. But if you ask them, would you marry her? Would you date her long term? Would you show her to your mother? The answer would be overwhelmingly no. When you look at the image on the right, you may still think I would do... I would do crazy things to this gal until dehydration sets in. But you would say, it, I could probably show her off to mom. I could show up to group functions with her. And she leaves everything that's covered for me and me alone. And that's what I prefer. And that would probably make a, a better wife slash girlfriend slash partner in life. Because one on the left is an exhibitionist for money. And the one on the right might just be your average, average everyday girl, although they don't really exist anymore. So these, the content creators here on 4chan, they started Dignify or Dignify. So it's D-I-G-N-I-F-A-I, which is obviously supposed to mean dignify. And they're taking salacious, spicy content and they're changing into more wholesome content. And this is one of their examples. And somebody posted down below this, and I'm going to I'll read a little bit more into it. He said, something about this image really hits deep. It's like a visual synthesis of all that's been lost, a meme in the truest original sense of the word. I feel like it evokes such a feeling in me that uh, then, in, uh, then that effect must be multiplied many fold for the target audience. And I suspect that's why it's getting such a visceral reaction. Though it's a cliche, a picture really does sometimes say a thousand words. And I think this, I, I agree with him. 
And I think what's happening is as men look at the picture of the woman on the left, you see somebody that you know is all over social media, is looking for validation, is looking for attention, is attractive, has a very nice body, uh, isn't family oriented, doesn't really care about a man or a family, and she's holding on to a puppy. She, she herself has turned herself into an object of, of sexual desire and nothing more. Where when you look at the woman on the right or the same image on the right, you, say, you would still say, wow, she's a beautiful woman. But it, it, it gives a whole different reaction to it, which is, um, wow, like family and, and beauty and, and having somebody that you can rely upon and trust and love and be a part of a community. It, it, it does give you a, a very, very different feel of the situation, not just by clothing her, but by, by adding a child, adding a more wholesome, wholesome look on it. And I think when I was growing up, and probably many of you that are maybe a little bit older, when you grew up, you look at the image on the left and you say, uh, wow, I would love to have a girlfriend like that or sleep with somebody like that or, or whatever. But when you look at the, the image on the right, that's the person you say, she's beautiful. I mean, I could see myself having a loving, caring wife and kids. It's almost like two different hemispheres of the brain. And that's what Digi uh, or Dignif, Dignif AI, Dignify, um, was trying to provoke or uh, trying to, um, to invoke is the word I'm looking for. I want to show you these images because um, there's already being articles written about it, hating on Dignif AI, and I think it's from conservatives, ironically. But he just takes images on the red carpet. I, uh, I forget this actress's or this musician's name. Uh, I think this is Miley Cyrus, actually. I never know. They change their faces and bodies and clothing so much you don't know anymore. But what it does is, is this AI just removes tattoos. It removes uh, salacious things, and it covers it with normal clothing. Um, I, none of this should be too saucy for, for, a, or for uh, YouTube because, again, it's, it's using digitized artwork. But it's taking a photo like this, which invokes one side of the male thought process, as it were. And it changes it because she says here, would, would you help me, uh, would you help with finding the right tools? Yes or no? Of course, invoking uh, saucy thoughts. And down here, um, they've changed it. And, and so if you said, would you help me finding the right tools? A guy would see this photo and he'd be like, yeah, like, I, I'm not saying that you necessarily find her hot, but a guy would be like, wow, like, She's, does she know actually know construction or is this just a, a photo shoot or what's going on here? But yeah, if she really knew construction, I'd let her play with my erector set. You know what I'm saying, right? And that's the whole, this whole account is taking saucy stuff and turning it into, like here she says, watch me or the Arsenal FC versus Liverpool FC soccer time. And this is what she posts. Well, if you take that here and you bleed it over into this, you'd say, well, I mean, she's still as pretty or not pretty, however, and they just go through and clean up these photos. They even did it with Elon Musk here, as you can see. And the point isn't to say, the point isn't to say that men, like women need to put their clothes on or women need to stop showing cleavage or tattoos or whatever. That, that would be a good start, but it's not to say that. It's not to say that women even necessarily need to be all wholesome. It's that this evokes two different sides of men's brains, men's thought process. One is it has a future. One has maybe the possibility of a relationship or children or love or commitment. And the other side is pure fantasy for men. And while that's good in some ways for men to be able to uh, – get their frustrations and their, their not clarity out. Uh, it also keeps them from wanting to interact with other people. It keeps women addicted to social media. It keeps, they're the ones that are devaluing themselves and now they're doing it for money and likes on the internet. And so when we talk about, you know, who really values women more, who really cares about women more, I would go on to say that most likely 
most likely the guys that are creating this AI actually appreciate women more than women do themselves because they're trying to bring back what a woman used to be to a man. Again, loving, caring, mother, lover, uh, other half, as my, my father might have said, you know, your other half as you get older. And, and something that is, that is seen as, as pure and beautiful, where the other half is just Friday night party, Saturday night, never talk to him again. Well, this is from Total News. And if you look here at the top, it's all about links to faith and America First and, and like Public Square, which is a great place to shop if you're trying to avoid woke stuff. And they say some internet dork is trying to reclothe beautiful women because of dignity. And it is pathetic. How, how far are we going now to where just everyday guys are like, can we stop with the craziness? Can we stop with being salacious and over the top? And can we just kind of maybe get back to being, you know, a little normal? And then conservative people are like, oh, you're overreacting. And how dare you? How, how, how dare you? You're pathetic. Uh, political commentator Jack Posobiec said Friday that a new AI tool is putting clothes back on, on the girls and removing their tattoos. The post shows four examples of women wearing limited clothing next to what Dignify thinks they should be wearing. The purpose of this creepy Internet robot person is to bring dignity back to the Internet, according to its Twitter account. What are men to do? when the left calls any guy that doesn't agree with everything that they think of as creepy and that you're shaming or being harmful if you don't want to let women do absolutely everything they want, you're creepy and bad and awful. And then guys say, you know what, I'd, this resonates with me. I would really love to see the family unit and the love of children and a, a spouse and the family unit brought back like I would that really strikes a, a home with me. And, a, and con, a conservative article writer comes out and says, well, you're just being creepy. They say, well, this sounds like a nice idea. I'm not exactly sure how shaming confident women is going to help bring dignity back to the Internet. Have we gone so far now that even conservative news outlets uh, are, are spouting leftist feminist talking points? Because that's what this sounds like. This, okay, this is not dignified. This is dignified. This is not dignified. This is very try hard. It is very thirsty, but it is still a lot closer to dignified. Same thing with this. Why is it no matter what direction and, and no matter what men say, Everybody hates against them. Feminists, conservatives, uh, left-leaning, right-leaning. No, no, no wonder so many men are kind of congregating in the center saying, I, I need a community for me because there's no one I agree with anymore. Everyone has gone crazy. How can a guy say, like on, on these photos that they show here, how can a guy say, you know, I want... Um, I want the woman on the right. This is who I, I want to date. The one without tattoos, the one that's classically beautiful, the one that keeps everything clothed and is unique and just for me. I don't want the one on the left. I can see a million of them on the internet. Same thing. Here, you see a woman with this shape, especially if she's well-dressed or professionally dressed, you're going to be like, man, shoof. Here on the left, you're like, club girl, no interest, don't care. Seen it, seen it before. The girl on the left, undateable for, for vast majority of men. Can be used as a fun toy, not dateable, not marriage material, not family. The one on the right, beautiful woman. Same thing. Men are just trying to say, look, we've seen this, man. We've been here enough. enough. You're, not, you're, not, you're not interesting anymore. You're like everybody else. And then the problem is quote unquote, conservative women come out and they do this trad wife, you know, thing, but they keep posting it on the internet, which is just a, a different form of thirst trap. 
If a woman really found to be, she wanted to be conservative and she didn't care about the likes and the attention on social media and she didn't need the social validation and all of this was a waste of time, all you'd see is a girl that looks like maybe this one on the left. You might see her, you might see her social media and then you'd never see this. You'd never see it again because maybe she went and got a laser tattoo removal and she found her man and things started to improve in her life and she changed her way. She becomes this woman, but she's offline. She's gone. Well, you, that's what you'd see. Instead, women are going out there and they're, they're doing the opposite, but they're doing it on social media because they know they're different now. Everybody's got the, you know, the craziness. So I'm gonna say that I'm sane again, and it's just as much of a trap as the other side. Uh, the right now, here's the funny thing. There's no author information. There's no author information on who wrote this dude, woman, I, who knows? Personally, I don't care what women wear. If you think a girl is trash because of her skimpy clothes and tattoos, or maybe because she's cool, um, then I hope you have the most beautiful life filled with time and space to worry about stuff that doesn't hurt anyone. But it does hurt people. It, it messes with men's minds and that it, it, guys are saying we're not interested in this or I'm, I'm just looking at her as a, a tool of pleasure and the women that I want to date and marry don't exist. And the argument that I hear all the time from feminists or from, from those saying that, you know, the, the spicy work is real work is they'll say, well, well you, you look at these women, you sleep with them, but you won't marry them, but you're, you're, you are part of the problem. No, no, we're not. You know, you can eat a salad with steak on top of it and it's very healthy, or you can eat fast food and it will eventually end you. They're both technically food, but they're both very different and they both are different things. One is for pleasure, one is for longevity and health. Well, if a woman says, hey, I'm, I, I just put it out there, a guy will say, well, I'm gonna enjoy you for what you are then, which is fun. Because you don't make me promise anything. You don't make me uh, wife you up or, or make an honest woman out of you. You just let me have my fun, so I'm going to do that. And when women say, yeah, but why won't you marry that same woman? Because she's fun. You know, she's fun. You can Motorcycles are, are great fun to ride. They're also very risky. Uh, they, they're good for going fast, but they're not good for long haul driving. They're not good for taking any passengers with you. They're not good for carrying any cargo. They're not good for staying warm. They're not good for staying cool. It, it like, there's a lot wrong with a motorcycle, but for the express purpose of getting from point A to point B around town, it, they're hella fun, but it's a, it's a vehicle of transport. Well, so is a, a cushy SUV with leather seats and 12 speaker surround sound and air conditioning and heated seats and all the rest of it. They both get you from point A to B, but they're two different things completely. That's the way men see these women. They're two different things. They're for two different purposes. And men will use women for both. More, more and more men though, want the woman that they, they can have for long term and, and it's not around anymore. I love the fact here that supposedly, I, like, th this is an editorial by this, this person, I, but I think it's interesting. We don't know if it's a, a man or a woman or conservative or what, and this is supposedly a, a conservative thing because they have all these links to conservative websites. They say, I also feel like it's editorial. Uh, I also feel this editorial is a great opportunity to tell everybody who watches me on Newsmax, uh, Joe Pag's show. Okay. Well, News, Newsmax is very conservative. Well, all, all men are doing is saying we want women to be conservative. Those are the women we want to marry and, and date long term and who love men and are going to be good moms are the conservative ones. We're just trying to show women how they would look if they were conservative. And, and the interesting thing here is the, uh, this page this Dignif AI has 44 posts, 44 posts. They already have 24,000 followers. And of course, I, I follow them as well. And it says dignity and respect. We're starting a movement. 
So they only have 44 posts. They have 24,000 followers. I have, I don't know how many posts, and I've only got, I think, about 16,000 followers. It's, it's striking a resonance with people. And of course, now people are, even conservative people are already complaining. It shows you how much the Overton window has shifted to the left. I hope more women come to realize that a lot of guys are not hating on them. They're just saying, for the love of God, please stop being awful. Stop being undateable. Stop being like objects and come back to reality. Let's, let's see if it'll happen. Here's a good example. If you take this woman, okay, and, and when I say somebody's cute or somebody's good looking, I'm not speaking for me personally, nor am I necessarily speaking for you. I'm speaking to the public at large that most people on average would find somebody attractive. That's really what I'm saying. You take this gal. Again, not hard to look at. This is why men say no, n no overseas vacations, no nights at, the, at a club without your man. Shouldn't even be going to a club if you've got a man. And, and the fact that she, she jumps on the internet to brag about it is the part that, that blows my mind. It's the part that just tells me that maybe there's no fixing this generation. Maybe they're just gone. Maybe the, it's too late for this generation of women. I left my boyfriend and I've been traveling for 10 days and I've slept with 22 people in that 10 days. My goal was 20 and I just hit 22 this morning. It's 1 p.m. now here in Paris and I need to check out because I'm going home. I really doubt I'm gonna get another one on the board, either on the plane or like on my layover. So I think 22 is where we're gonna cap it out. But how did I go? 22 in 10 days. That's two a day. If, if I was in high school, if I was in college, if I was uh, uh, working with a woman that looked like this and she dressed, you know, she dresses conservative like this or relatively conservative, you know, she's not wearing anything crazier. And you said, dude, uh, you know, Becky and I don't know, human resources or whatever. Yeah. She's got a thing for you, man. She wanted to know if you'd take her out Friday night. Like, here's her number. And if I, if, and then if I text her, Hey, Becky, did, did, you know, so-and-so told me that you wanted to to maybe hang out this weekend. Uh, is that true? Yeah, let's go to a movie. Let's do, guy, there's so many men that would be like, oh my gosh, I'd love that. Make an honest woman out of her. How do you now? How do you not, how are you not afraid? Like legitimately afraid. Can you imagine having this as a girlfriend and finding that out? Two a day for 10 days in Paris and bragging about it on the internet? You, she's not mentally sound. That she's not healthy. She's messed up. And that's how most men would see this. Now, she's not, uh, she's not dressing, you know, all risky and everything. I know I wasn't one of the guys that was in Paris that had his way with her. But this is what men talk about when they say, we don't want women like this. They're, they're damaged. They don't value themselves. And if they can't value themselves, if they love themselves so little, how can I love them? How can I support them? How can I be a partner to somebody who thinks so little of themselves and everybody else around them? But we can't let, for some reason, the feminists will just not let this sink in that it's not men. It's not men that are degrading you. It's not men that are hating on you. You're doing it to yourselves, and a lot of guys are screaming, for the love of God, stop this. Stop it. You're hurting yourselves. And they refuse to see it because of empowerment and everything else. It's not men that makes, it's not men, that makes men hate women. It's women who hate themselves that, that make men not care. Make, make men not care about them anymore. That's really how I feel about this. Uh, Rola Tomasi, of course, saw this video. And he says, be somewhat attractive. Create 30-second TikTok video uh, alleging shameless behavior. Wait for dude bro body count rage reactions. I guess that's what he'd say I'm doing here. Wait for uh, more rage on Daily Wire YouTube. 
wait for six uh, or sex positive versus decline of Western civilization talk show rage. Maybe that's what I'm doing. He says profit. So who's profiting here? And, and let's take his argument because here even Rolo's like kind of being having an interesting take on this. There's three options for us at this point in time as men. A, ignore it. Just ignore it. Okay, there's a problem with that, though. Men naturally want to look out for, every, for other men. Guys have a protective instinct in them. They want to protect other men. They want to protect civilizations. They want to protect women and children and dogs. And so when men see this, they say, I got to warn everybody. Like, I, I got to share this craziness. I want men to know that even the cute girl next door thing that only went on 10 days vacation turned it out twice a day. Yeah, this is important to talk about. How's she going to profit off of this? She won't. There's no profit to be made. I mean, maybe she'll get a deal on tic TikTok or something. Okay, great. But, but because men's groups and maybe Daily Wire and decline of Western civilization shows talk about this, because maybe they get some ad revenue, why they talk about it. Is this a bad thing? Is this suddenly awful that we talk about these? I mean, this is sharing what's going on in the world today. How is this an awful thing? I'm, I'm just confused by this take by him. I mean, he, he's entitled to his, his opinion. But what are we supposed to do? If you see everything around you crumbling down and men cannot figure out where they belong in the world, what's going on in the world, how do you fix this? What's my long-term goal? Am I going to be able to find a girlfriend or a wife? Am I going to be able to have a family? Like, what is going on? If, if we share that and now suddenly it's a, a bad thing that we're talking about it because there's some, like, I don't know, ad revenue or something in it, like, of course we're going to talk about this. I mean, Rollo, more than anybody, probably should know that we need to talk about these things. I'm just very confused on his take here. But again, this is what's so confusing for so many men. Oh, we got a, a you know, quote unquote, red pill guy making fun of this stuff or calling people out for talking about it. We get made fun of by the left by, by calling out. We're getting made fun of by the right calling it out. Like, where, what are we supposed to do? I'm genuinely asking you. Are we just supposed to ignore it all and plow through lives miserable without any laughs or, or without any knowledge of what's going on? Genuine question, because that's what it sounds like. Uh, the first half of this is a little harsh. I had to run it through an, a, a music audio scraper because, of course, they play cringe music over it. But I had very loud piano in the, in the beginning, and I had to taper it off a little bit. Uh, this is a woman who used to be an educator. And she knows what's going on with the next generation. And apparently it's going back even further than we thought, because I thought this was like a high school slash college phenomenon. Apparently it's going back to even before the teens. Um, and, and I think this is how a lot of men feel about dating today. Let me break it to you boys. The average 23 year old girl has slept with more men than the average 53-year-old woman. Let that sink in. We're living in a time, and I know this because I'm a, I used to be a teacher for many years, and I couldn't believe the sexual promiscuity amongst 14, 13, 12-year-old girls because here's what they had. They had access to Snapchat. They could send news of themselves to older boys or whatever it is from the age of 11, 12, news or whatever it is, well, it's technically child they would start so young and they're living in an era where there's no uh, negativity attached to sleeping around it's seen as liberating so by the time a girl is 23 years old I promise you she slept with more men than a 53 year old woman because a 53 year old woman grew up in a time where she was shamed for sleeping around there was no sexual liberation there was a sanctity attached to sexuality a 22 year old grew up in a time where snapchat twerking um, you know wearing promiscuous clothes going out being on social media was all normalized so if you think that oh you know, I'm going to be with a 21 year old. She's going to have low body count. Guys, what world do you live in? What world do you live in? And, and I think she's right. 
I think she's right because of the social media and the the availability to everybody, young people, and, and they're praised for it, young people are getting caught up in this stuff. So the, the days of even a man expecting any age woman that he dates to have a low body count, to not have damage, to not have the craziness, is virtually all but gone. And then men are forced to do a couple of things. They either accept it, and they say, well, you know, who cares who she's been with before me, as long as she's faithful to me. Man, but the statistics don't show there's good rec- odds of that. And that, that women's ability to pair bond and to love and to become attached to just one man after high body counts is both chemically in the brain gone. I mean, I've, I've done videos on this. The, the, the inhibitors and the, the neural uptake and all, et cetera, et cetera. That's all, that's all toast. That's just fried out. And, and the ability to accept a man for what he is as he is today is gone. Because she's had Bill, the rich guy, and Bob, the tall guy, and John, the hung guy, and, you know, Frank, though, you know, they, and, and no matter who they end up with, you're going to be lacking when she's comparing you to 20, 30, 50, 100 other guys. You're going to be lacking somewhere. There's no such thing as the guy that has everything, because if they do, they're not picking her. And it's boiling down to, is there any fix for this? And, and I, I'm not trying to hand out black pills today. I'm really not. But there does become a point in time where you say, you know, I guess the family unit's just against me. The ability to find somebody that's going to be right for me is very slim. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't even mean you should stop looking or trying. It just means you need to understand the mathematics of it, and it's not good. But the ability to find a gal that's you know, relatively okay with taking four or five hundred dollars from you and giving you all the the fun you want for an evening, that's still on the table. And and it seems that, you know, the powers that be are fine with that. That the, they'd rather have women sleeping around and, and selling themselves than to than to dare find a single man and start a family. That's the worst thing you could do. That feels like what it's what it's turning out to be. And and based on recent information how can you think otherwise then you've got a gal like this now this is part of the problem that i was talking about earlier is is she genuine about her feelings or is she a a chameleon i'm, I'm going to play through this ask and ask yourselves now do you believe this or or is she just I don't know, finding a new way to get validation on social media. Did feminists ever stop to consider that maybe some of us didn't want to leave the kitchen? I mean, I would make all the sandwiches to be able to stay home. I'd be fine with that. I don't want a man in my kitchen. I don't want him sprinkling my freshly ground salt all over the floor and step on shards of salt every time I walk in the door. Isn't it funny how even though she's talking about, I don't want to, I don't want to work and I want to be a stay-at-home woman, she still has to throw the dig and the insult, the insult, the insult on a guy like, like we're cave animals and we couldn't, we'd somehow be knocking freshly ground salt all over the floor. Like, do we have an ice problem in the kitchen or something that I don't know about? I don't know. Like, stay out, stay out of the kitchen. I'll stay out of the workplace. I would be fine with that. I don't want equality. I don't want somebody to pound me up and ask me if I paid the cable bill. I want to be someone's delicate flower. I want to be treated like a sweet baby angel. I want them to come home and be like, babe, did you make this? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, my love. And I'm like, I know. That's what I want. Like, equality is not it. Okay, she says equality is not it. She's got a nose piercing. She's got her eyebrows highly done. She's got mascara. She's got two or three toned nails. She's, she's got several rings, uh, uh, gold rings on, on her hands. This is high maintenance. And, and she's, she's coming here on social media, as always, saying, oh, well, I want, why are you on social media? What's your name? Um, okay, l- let me look up her name here real quick. All right, I pulled up her TikTok. And there it is. 
all about herself and herself and herself and herself doing all these selfies and everything in her car. Wait for it. Wait for it. Single mother. Okay. Hopper's picks for who she would want me to date. And I am not allowed to influence her. Okay. That one is too. Okay. She's a single mom. Now she wants to be a stay at home mom. Now she wants a man to uh, take care of her so she can just stay in the kitchen and cook and to take care of the household. Why didn't you do this before the kid? There's always something to it. I did not look this up. I literally paused the video and went to, to look her up. There's always something, isn't it? It's always when the best years are gone. It's always once, oh no, now I have a kid and I need a good man. Oh no, I can't find a job and Oh, no, the draft is coming and women might need... There's always something. There's always something. So she's not a chameleon, ironically. I can say that now. But the problem is she's a single mom. So she can't be a chameleon anymore. She can't hide anymore because she got the kid. How, how do we fix this? Because we men that, that sit up or stand up and say, please, stop, for the love of God, stop this. This isn't what we want. We're told we're toxic. When we point out women, you know, hey, we'd, we'd rather have women clothed and, and, and being more demure. Stop it. You're being shameful. You're, you're harmful. You're horrible. What do we do? This is why men tap out. This is why men just say, you know what? I'm done with the crazy. Like, there's nothing left for me here. Just going to move on. I'm just going to move on. It's because... Th even when they're trying to be upfront and say, I like women, I, I, I like the way they smell and the way they look and the way they feel and the way they taste and all the good things. But I don't like when you're like this. Women are like, oh yeah, watch this. And then they, is there any fixing it? I genuinely wonder now. I genuinely wonder, or if it's just too late, if it's just, we're just, we're just past peak insanity. Because I see these things, and I can't help but feel that way. And it's okay. You just, as a guy, you got to be, you know, realistic about, about what your future looks like. I'll, um, I've got some stuff that I'm going to do. i got some stuff that I'm going to do over for just locals. Um, but I'll leave you with two things here. Um, I'll leave you with this. This is... They have the SWAT teams of various police departments. This is the Chilean, the Chilean uh, SWAT team for their, I don't know, somewhere in their government. And they have a competition for these lady SWAT teams, these female SWAT teams, to go to a competition. I think this is in the UK. Now, this sit down here says BRT, which you'd think means Britain. I don't know. But it turns out exactly like you think it would. Let's check out Chile's. I think it's the Chilean. Let's check out the Chilean SWAT team. Their best, their best SWAT team that they've sent for international competition. Let's see how they do on the first obstacle. Vamos. All right, I've got a hundred. For those of you just Five listening. Teams. It's about a 100 meter dash. We're coming up to the very first obstacle on the course. In the UE SWAT challenge this year. Taking a, a, a little rope and uh, Belarus, Thailand, uh, sliding over Chile. water. Uh oh. Two teams from the Emirates. Uh oh. No. One made it. Oh no. Oh, one's in the water. Oh, this doesn't bode well. The Good thing that water. To get wet. In the ice bath today. Good thing that water's not too deep because uh, with all that equipment on, they probably sink like a stone. Well, they are. Now they're flailing the around, line. wiggling. The other one's Remember. trying to lower the line on the far end. No, that's not going to work. In the ice bath, you have to go back. See, the trick is you got to run really, really fast, get enough momentum to make it all the way across. But they couldn't do that. Three team members stranded in the middle of that ice bath. Okay, now, now before I, I continue on, I'm just going to get a little thought. Okay, guys, you're, you're in a competition. 
you, you've just tried to run and slide across this and it's not working. But it's a competition for time. Or let's say, you, God forbid, you're in the real world in some SWAT situation and this happens to you. Are you going to hang there like a mook while people, I don't know, fire at you? Or are you going to drop off the line into the ice water, get up, go around and try to run even faster? Or depending on the rules of the contest, do you just get off that little pulley type thing and just hand over hand it across the wire? Well, you see, a guy could do that because I, I, I was in the military. We used to hand over hand stuff like this, and I was 18 years old. You, had, you just hand over hand or you grab on with both hands and you swing your legs up and then you pull with your upper body with your legs crossed over the wire and just slide your legs across there. I mean, it's, it's an easy way to, to get across. The road. You could do any of the above. What do they do? Kick and flail like goofs? Thank now this one tries to go and kick the other ones in the back. On this that didn't, that, uh, that's not going to do anything. Vamos, vamos. And now they're all stuck, flailing and... Th this is the first obstacle. And it just goes to show you how now, that's a minute in. Let's go all the way to the... Here's all the way to the uh, five-minute mark. Let's see if they finally get across this thing. Because it's like, ladies, you got to run fast. They've got two team members over. Uh, that are running and they're getting pushed by other team members. Vamos. So now they have to have help getting their chonky butts moving fast enough to make it across the water. This last one's like, two okay, let me can, see if I can do. And uh, I got... Uh, 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 stick out. Oh, I made it. One more. Oh, like one Uno more. Mas. Uno mas. Uh, e. Vamos. There you Uno go. Mas. Now, why were they having an easier time getting across one at a time instead of all of them? Simple. When you have four people on a zip line like this, that's a lot of weight. These girls look to be about a buck and a half each. That's 600 pounds in the middle of, and if they're all going at the same point, they get to the middle. That's 600 pounds in the middle of that. That pulls that down a lot, which means you need a lot more speed to try to get along fast enough. But when you go one at a time at a buck fifty, that's four times less weight. The the cable doesn't sag as much, and they can get across. But you know, congratulations, ladies, on making it across the first obstacle in six minutes. All right, I'm gonna. Re I'm oh, and this is the last one I'll I'll do for YouTube here, and then the last segments I'm gonna do over on locals. Uh, this is from uh, a guy named Texas here on uh, on uh, Twitter. Where's the, where's the uh, there we go. And and this is going to tie in because I'm going to talk about uh, journalists drink too much or bad at managing emotions and operate at a lower level than average. And we're going to talk about how uh, a report uh, college students average IQ has plunged. Uh, employers can't count on grades, grads being smarter than average because, number one, they'll let anybody in into college for, because they want the money and they don't care that they drop out or fail because now they got a guaranteed payout because of the loans. And then we're going to talk about this. Married Minnesota mom uh, fooling around with 15-year-olds uh, while her husband uh, was out of town. Cause that's, but we're not going to talk about those on YouTube. I'll leave you with this. This is uh, from Texas or Mustang man in Texas. Four college students and not one of them can answer the question, what's 15 times four? These are college students. And there's something else I want you to also listen when you hear this video. I remember when we talk about, we talk about, um, oh, I forget the name of the study. Uh, the conformity study. Why, why? Anyway, that if, if seven people in the room, even if something's completely false and one or two people know that it's false, if eight people raise their hand in uh, the ash, uh, ash conformity test, that's it. If eight people say, no, it's right, it's right. And many times the other two will either agree just to not be the odd man out or they'll agree because they get convinced they're actually wrong because of the ash conformity. Well, here you're going to see not only the ash conformity in practice, because they, they all agree with somebody that's completely wrong. Um, but these are college students. 
when I was in, I think it was second or third grade. I want to say it was second grade, third grade. I know it was in my primary, like elementary school, because some of the kids that I remember doing this with were not in my middle school. Because we, we lived in kind of a very rural, spread out area. And so sometimes, depending on where borders lie of townships and all that, you'd go to school with certain kids and then you'd, you'd go your separate ways when it came to middle school or high school. I remember competing against a couple of guys in my class because we all wanted to be the fastest at flashcard math. So a lot of us boys were very competitive and we wanted to be the one to be the smartest kid to be able to go around the classroom being faster at answering math questions. And so the teacher would hold up a flashcard and it might say like nine times six, be like oh, uh, uh, 54, uh, wait, 48, oh, sit down, right? The one kid would get it faster. And so we became, and it was, uh, I want to say it was all the way up to 15 times 15. That was in second or third grade and kids were right on the money with those babies. Now you ask four college students, what's 15 times four? And this is what that sounds like. What is 15 times four? 15 times 4. Gosh. 20, 30, 30, 30. 23? 20. 24. 20. 48, 48. So we've got 23, 24, and 48 are the genius answers so far. 48. And now the, one, the one's very confident in saying 48. She's like, 48, 48, it's 48. Listen to all the other bobbleheads. I was like 48. I was like 48. So, so the confident, dumb one gets everyone else to agree. Does that sound like anything else that you know about politics, Hollywood, media, government? This is this is what what you get. These are at uh, Kennesaw, uh, Kennesaw State University. This is college. This is college, man. We're talking about like maybe elementary to, I don't know, second, third, fourth grade math. Hell, let's say there's kind of slow. It's sixth grade math, eighth grade math. It, of course, it's, I mean, you got, you got people learning about pre-calc and AP classes in, in high school, for being honest about it. They can't, 15 times four is beyond them. But when somebody confidently says 48, the rest, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll agree with that, 48. Not one, this is four people together as a collective group. They're allowed to vote. They're the ones telling you that you're bad on the internet and that you have bad ideas and that you should shut up. And if you don't like the politician or what Disney's doing or all these other things, you should be removed from society. Good luck to you. That's all I got to say. Guys, if you're here on a YouTube, make sure to jump, excuse me, jump over to betterbachelor.locals.com. Uh, we did movie, uh, movie stream this past weekend. We watched Predator and we watched uh, Happy Gilmore in memory of Mr. Carl Weathers that left us. Every Saturday I do live streams. And uh, this upcoming Sunday, we're going to be doing the Super Bowl. So if you'd like to watch that with a group of guys over there, please come over, become a supporter today at betterbachelor.locals.com. Links down below. And I hope to see you there sometime soon. For the rest of us on Locals, let's jump to the, the real shizzle.